Well, what about the idea of better living through actually having a way to give drugs? And not only being able to give drugs, but a way to give drugs that actually work. Why this is an issue is that whole idea of giving drugs down the tube. And you can give, depending on who you talk to, Narcan, Atropine, Epi, or Lido. You can now give Vasopress and they're finding down the tube as well. But what current research will show you regarding drugs down the tube is a couple things. Number one, they don't work. Number two, they don't work. And why that's an issue is number one, you're dead. And if you're dead, you can squirt whatever you want down there. What does it do? Well, <laughs> sit there. Number two, a really neat study done by anesthesia. They took adults undergoing open heart, and after they put them to sleep, they intubated them, put an app of Epi down their tube, just to see if it would make a difference. And if you were alive, Epi down your tube did not significantly change your heart rate. Can you imagine if you're dead, it's going to make that much more of a difference in your heart rate. Can you do it? Yeah, as an absolute last resort. But now what they currently teach is simple, and it's anything is better than down the tube. That means you start an IV, which is great, except you have to start the IV. And starting an IV in this little 23-weeker who fits in your hand is not going to be easy. I agree. But who's actually much more difficult than this kid? Is this kid! Why is this little kid so tough? Well, fat! Anywhere you want to start it, he's got it. But they may not have veins, they always have tibias. And even more than before, they're pushing for the idea of intraosseous. Because many of you all know it's hard enough to start an IV in a healthy kid. Not to mention one who's dead or nearly dead. But you have nearly instantaneous access to big old veins, and it works wonderfully well. Now, as many of you all remember, intraosseous used to only be for children. It's not anymore. Have you seen where medics are now putting I.O. lines on adults? Number one, they're going in the sternum. And this is about as testosterone-packed as it's going to get. They use it for cardiac arrest, for burns, for traumas, for overdose. You know what? In the adult population, it works pretty well. However, now in the adult but also pediatric population, two other toys, as we'll demonstrate for you in just a moment, that I highly recommend you become acquainted with. Number one, this is the bone drill. The EZIO is the adult version. The PDIO has recently been released, and that's the pediatric version. This is essentially a Black & Decker drill with an intraosseous needle attached. You simply light it up and <laughs> it's in. The other option is the bone gun. The bone gun is a spring-loaded intraosseous device. One for adults, one for children. You simply light it up, pull the trigger, and boom, <laughs> it's in. Either way, studies will show you in head-to-head -head trials, if you compare traditional pals a la chicken bone, <laughs> and you put it in head-to-head -head trials against the gun to the drill, your chance of putting it in the right spot the first time, as you can imagine, are a whole lot better. And once it's actually in, it works interestingly just as fast as a central line does. In the resuscitation arena, whether it's for children or now for adults as well, more and more people are finding that if you can't get an IV in reasonably quickly, that intraosseous really is the option of choice. And as we do this, the BIG, or the bone injection gun, take a look at the arrow. You see that it's always pointing down so that it doesn't go into your hand. While you've stabilized it, you simply line it up, pull the trigger, and it's in. The easy IO, or now the pediatric, or the PDIO, the same concept applies. You find the appropriate site, you stabilize the bone and the site, light it up, and it's in. Just as with the BIG, once it's actually in, go ahead and remove the stylet, hook up your lower lock, your I.O. is in place, and you're ready to go. Now, what do they not teach you that they really should in ACLS or PALS regarding fluids? And that's number one, what kind of fluid do you never hang during a code? And I'll actually give you four choices. And that's when you show up on Code Blue Pediatrics. Whatever it is, take it.
down. Because it's going to be d5, 2, with 20 fk, and an amp of something up there. You know what? That's not it. Other options, d5, w, is not it. The reason being, you remember yesterday we talked about d5w and head injuries and how it breaks down into dextrose plus water, making your brain swell. Other problems is that studies in cardiac arrest have shown that if you actually survive a cardiac arrest, and at the time of your cardiac arrest, if your blood sugar was normal, you actually have a better neurologic outcome than if your blood sugar was high. Other problems is, think about it, if you're hypotensive, are you going to bolus them with d5? No, and therefore D5W is not it. What does that leave you with? Two choices. Number one, LR. LR is okay if you don't have any saline. The problem with LRs is lactated ringers. Where is lactate broken down? It begins with L. It's called your liver. Why is that a problem? What is your liver doing if you're dead? Not much, because you're dead. Therefore, lactate in the presence of a non-functioning liver is broken down into lactic acid. Why is that a problem? Because dead people are profoundly lactic acidotic because they're dead. Therefore, giving something that breaks down into lactic acid to people that are already acidotic, again, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. How do you remember you should not do that before you go ahead and hang it, read the bag? What does the bag say if you read it first line bold print capital letters not for the treatment of lactic acidosis? Therefore, if you can merely pick up the bag and read it, that is not what you should be hanging. So what does that leave you with? Saline. It's quick, it's cheap, it's easy. Everything is compatible with it. All the drugs, again, are compatible. If you don't like what their blood pressure is, go ahead and open the bag. It's isotonic to help to move the fluids and the drugs around. Saline is where it's at. Now, how fast do you run an IV during a code? Gave you two choices. And that's called keep open or wide open. Most people actually say wide open. And their rationale for wide open is because we've always run it wide open. However, if you actually think about it, what is the reason you're giving any fluids whatsoever during a medical cardiac arrest? It's purely to move the drugs around. Which means if you give them one amp of epi followed by a one liter saline chaser, does that help? The answer is no. In reality, what's currently recommended in children, but also in adults, is to push the drug. Then to give them a 20, 30, 40, 50, pick a number, give them a little bolus of fluid to get it out of the tubing and up the arm. Once it's actually out of the tubing and up the arm, all that extra fluid does not help push the epi around anymore. Think about it from the perspective of an adult cardiac arrest for a minute. Medics get called to a nursing home for a 96-year-old in full arrest. They show up, they put two big IVs in, saline running wide open, hit the doors of the ER, she's still dead, they're both dry. What do you do? Hang two more. Ten minutes into the code, she's still dead, they're both dry. What do you do? Hang two more. Twenty minutes into the code, you're just about to call it. She comes back with six liters of saline on board. This woman went into CHF because you gave her an extra salt packet with dinner, not to mention six liters of saline. Therefore, if you think that you have a trauma situation where fluids are an issue, certainly feel free to give them some. But for routine cardiac arrest, keep open is really where it's at. Their lungs, their heart, their kidneys, and their head will thank you in the event that they come back. Now, where do you put an IV during a code? Called anywhere. Any vein is a good vein. Anywhere you see the blue line that's not pulsating, stick it. The good Lord above made it harder to stick children. Therefore, there's more places to stick kids. Now, with that, what size do you put in is called anything you can get, except if you're a ER nurse or a paramedic. Because ER nurses and medics across the country have a vision. And the vision is everybody has to have what size IV? It's an 18. Why does everybody have to have an 18? I don't know, but they just have to have one. <laughs> Somewhere along the way it was taught that if you put in anything smaller than an 18 and you attempt to give blood through it, the blood is going to hemolyze, and it is not true. And the reason I know that is, remember a couple moments ago, I showed you that 23-week baby that fit in the palm of my hand. Can I put an 18 gauge in this baby? Absolutely, when he's 18. And it's certainly not going to happen before then. Can you give blood through a 24 gauge? Absolutely. It works just fine. It's slow as molasses, but it works. Any IV is a good vein. 
any size is a good size, put the IV in and be done.